Hello, and welcome to The Monster Painter. This time I'm going to try to turn this grubby old toy into some exciting frost grave terrain. So this old plastic dollhouse has some potential. The second floor has a good scale and the thing has an overall ruined house vibe that attracted to me in the first place. Uh, lots of potential, but it's going to need lots of work. The process of creation is often begun with an act of destruction. In this case, I will be applying brute force to this small plastic house. I'm going to remove this quirky little hamster wheel thing on the side and get this project started. I did manage to get the thing removed, but I had to do it off camera for fear of knocking my uh, whole little studio kit about while I was wrestling with this toy. All right, real destruction requires tools. I will be uh, scoring the plastic with the utility knife, cutting a nice deep line into it, and then uh, chewing at it with the snips. It's a bit of a process, and I'm sure it would be a lot faster and easier with a Dremel tool, but I don't have one, so instead I am chewing at it with the snips. I will repeat the creative destruction on the ground level of this doomed dollhouse. Of course, I'm going to be mindful while using dangerous tools like a utility knife. No need for a blood sacrifice, after all. I will chew away at the toy, cutting it back to the house's foundation. I will also salvage that little tree stump, uh, because I think it will make a dandy piece of scatter terrain. Regrettably, creative destruction generates rubbish, and this project has resulted in a little pile of garbage. Now let's see if we have the start of some tabletop terrain. The second story of this dollhouse will make a convincing one-story ruin. The design of the toy really le lends itself to a ruined house, and so the design of the toy is going to be doing all the heavy lifting. The first story looks like it has some tactical potential, and um, I think it's going to make a dandy piece of ruined terrain. And not to be forgotten, the tree stump I salvaged from the yard, I think it's going to make a very viable piece of scatter terrain. The next step in the process involves some real super science. I mean, this is some complex and advanced technology. You really wouldn't understand it unless you had an advanced degree in hydrological antisepsis engineering. Now this thing was clearly once a well-loved toy and the likely site of numerous adventures and narratives. Now that it is washed up, it is time to use a little lighter fluid and remove the last evidence of its life as a toy. This thing is covered in all sorts of stickers. Disney stickers, kitten stickers, all manner of stickers, uh, as well as a whole bunch of bits of tape. It all has to be removed if this toy is to be transformed into some tabletop terrain. It's time to take some sandpaper and scuff up all this smooth plastic. I'm doing this in hopes of creating a rougher surface for the primer to hold on to. So our two ruined buildings are looking pretty decent and they're almost ready to prime but I really want to sell them as 28 millimeter tabletop terrain. To this end, I will be adding some gribbly bits that I salvaged from a Harry Potter play set. They're a good scale, and these little bobs are going to go a long way in making the toy look like a ruined, abandoned building at the correct scale. And there we go, the gribbly bits are all firmly glued down. I used some plastic wood paneling from the same Harry Potter playset to cover up uh, a hole and a couple of my mistakes. Our three models are now ready for the primer. I have hit the models with a couple of generous coats of acrylic gesso, my primer of choice. They are ready to paint up and are finally looking more like terrain than like toys. All right then, I have put down a dark brown base coat on all of the wooden elements, the floors, the roof, the tree stump of these models. I will be applying a dry brush layer of bronze yellow, a nice woodsy warm brown color to all those aforementioned wooden elements. Uh, it's a pretty straightforward step, 
as I am demonstrating on this little stump. On all the brick and stonework, I have applied a dark gray base coat. To this, I will add a dry brush layer of a lighter gray, a mixture of Payne's gray and unbleached titanium. There is a lot of lovely texture on these models, and this step should help bring them out and make the, the whole thing look more convincing overall. I'm going to add a layer of unbleached titanium, a nice warm off-white color, to the inner wood of the stump. Later, I will add a brown wash to the thing off-screen and call the little stump done. Now back to the main event. I will be adding a sloppy brown wash to all the wooden elements of these two models. This should bring out the textures and to start weathering these ruins. All right, inch by inch and step by step, this ruined dollhouse toy is slowly but surely starting to turn into a couple of tabletop ruins suitable for a game of Frostgrave. Onward, ever onward. I will now apply a layer of unbleached titanium to all the plaster walls of these models. This warm off-white is a convincing color for old plaster. I will be applying this layer in a tidy manner in order to cover up all the overpainting from previous steps as we are starting to close in on the end game for this project. Next up, I will add a coat of dark brown to all the remaining wooden elements, mostly the door frame and the broken window frames. These ruins are really starting to take shape now. And now on to a critical step. I will be applying a sloppy thin brown wash to all the plaster walls of our two, two ruins. This is going to dirty them up and weather and age them. One of the nice things about painting old ruins is the things aren't supposed to be crisp and neat. They are supposed to be dilapidated dangerous structures, and so putting them together can be altogether more relaxing. Here we are at the penultimate step in the project. I have to paint up the gribbly bits that reinforce the scale of the ruins. This is going to be tricky, fiddly, and awkward, so I'm going to save myself the grief of trying to film it and just do it off camera. At long last, we have arrived at the final step, which is the final step in so many of my terrain projects. I will be adding a gradated wash of sap green along the base of the buildings and along the bottoms of the interior walls. This uh, will ground the models in an environment integrate them with all the other terrain pieces that are finished in a similar way, and add a nice sense of rot to the project. And here they are, all finished up and ready to hit the table. If only there was a better way of showing off the final product than twirling the models around by hand. And wouldn't you know it, wherever there is a need, there is a gizmo to solve that need. And wherever there is a gizmo, there is a plutocrat willing to sell it to you, shipping included. I have wanted to get my hands on one of these rotating display stands for a long time now, so I finally dropped the hammer and picked one up. I have added to my channel's infrastructure, but will it revolutionize the monster painter? Let's take a look at the finished products as they revolve. Here is our little tree stump, looking every bit like a tree stump. The steps are a little quirky, but overall it's going to make a very convincing bit of scatter terrain. And here it is in its natural habitat, adding texture to the tabletop forest. And here is the second story of the old dollhouse. I think it is a reasonably convincing ruined house. It might have been a good idea to convert one of the windows into a door, perhaps, but I think it will still work as a ruined residence in the frozen city of Old Felstad. It's a decent looking ruin, and the gribbly bits are really doing their job selling the thing as a 28mm ruined house. Onto the ground floor of the old dollhouse, and to my surprise it might be the more successful of the pair. 
It's definitely a convincing ruined house, and it even has a bit of a Tudor vibe to it. I think it'll fit in quite well with the ruins of Frostgrave, and quite possibly work very well in other war-torn settings, such as World War II or the Napoleonic period. All in all, I'm very pleased with the project. For a mere five dollars, a whole bunch of time, and some paint, I have got myself a couple of excellent ruins for my tabletop. You know, people don't appreciate how good they have it these days. Oh great, here we go. Why, when I was a kid, all the telephones were wired to the wall. And if you were walking down the street talking to yourself, it meant you were crazy! Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, if I could roll my eyes right now, they'd be rolling. Yeah, yeah, and uh, we only had four channels on the TV. And one of them was the CBC in French. And we watched it anyway. Tell that to kids today, they think you're crazy. Yeah, but you are crazy. Can't we watch, just watch a monster fight now? Yeah, you're probably right. It's probably time for a monster fight. Yeah, monster fight. Tonight's monster fight pits a sexy elf. An old metal miniature made of lead. Yes, she really can kill you. Versus the fire dwarf brass band. A variety of plastic Warhammer musicians, probably from the 1990s. And now the Oracle of Stones shall make their decision. Hardly surprising. Now let's watch this play out in the ring. it victory to the sound the fury the polka in the grim darkness of the 40th millennium there is only barbie remember to like comment subscribe and Ring the bell! Ring the bell! Monster Painter.